to me, um, I honestly, I don't know. I obviously I know Peter Dow and what he was back in the day. I will give him the benefit of the doubt that he's had an evolution and is now sees the light. Uh, but with that said to me, the issue for me is not necessarily Peter Dow. I don't really think it's the right choice to me. If you are going to make real progress, get past 5%. I don't think the bar should be 5%. I think you should be shooting for more than 5%. You're really going to have to run a, a non-traditional campaign. And what I mean by that is I think Cornell West has a real opportunity to reach non-voters. Um, you know, because a lot of non-voters are, you know, poor black people, poor Hispanic people, indigenous people, poor white people, just poor people. And who's the only person talking about poverty? Cornell West. Who's the person traveling to Mississippi, you know, a gazillion times. Um, and I think that message can work. And I think you really need somebody who uh, has experience in, I know it became a dirty word because of Obama, but like actual community organizing, not just like being a manager, but how to organize communities. Cause you're going to have to go into, um, you know, areas that don't have, uh, you know, a strong record of voting. Uh, you're going to have to go into uh, areas that have been left behind. That doesn't mean you're not going to target, you know, uh, he said he wants to talk. Cornell said he wants to go to Trump country. Uh, he, I think he could try to target some religious voters because he kind of talks in religious uh, tones. But to me, the biggest opportunity is getting non-voters, um, immigrants. Uh, B Bernie did a good job in Iowa in 2020. His campaign did these satellite caucuses and they got in Iowa you know, Somalian, Somali Americans and Muslim Americans. And that's part of how he won Iowa. He did win Iowa. Sorry, Pete. Um, so I think you need somebody who really knows how to actually organize. I don't, I don't really know if Peter, I mean, he's worked in politics, but that's not organizing. And even if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, I don't think he's just tweeting for the last six months to a year that he's seen the light. I don't think he's faking it, but I don't really know if he, if you've had a lifer in politics, I don't know if that's the right person to run a non-traditional campaign exactly. of, of what I'm describing. Yeah, I mean, I reached out a while ago to the contact that I thought that I had at that campaign and I offered to help in terms of setting up a strategy to do service-based campaign around the country because I think that's what they need to do. I think they need to, you know, between college campuses and doing something like Bernie's Barnstormer, but you then need to turn that around and create like a service core that's going into the communities and talking with people and helping people that creates your organization that will outlast your campaign. That's how you create a community movement. And I reached out. I said that I suggested it. I'm like, I'm so happy to come and help like set that up, like how we sort of did that here. And I can't get a response. So all I can say is I'm trying to put out this because I can see what what needs to happen almost in my head. And the idea of going along some traditional partisan type path, like with the, I call them the W triple C now, <laughs> like for white collar campaign carnies. And, you know, these guys are just not with solving the problem. They're just about collecting a paycheck. So I, I just think that if you're going to go that road, it's not going to yield any different results than we've seen in the past. And there's also this huge problem with people not recognizing where the real strength comes from. It's almost like if you're, if you are in Dr. West's shoes because of his disposition and how he articulates himself, the type of person he needs running his campaign is like a Sean Fain. You need that type of barnstorming leader, take no prisoners, organizing figure that can yeah. really get people going. It's almost like the yin and the yang type of thing. And that isn't what's happening here. Jen is often saying hey, that. No, if I was, I mean, I don't think Cornell needs somebody to tell him this. He said he no. plans on it. But if I were his campaign right now, numero one would be we need to be on the front lines at this UAW strike and we need to be at other strikes and we need to be yeah. part of other union actions uh, yeah. because the media can't resist covering him. Uh, so they will cover him. They'll probably, you know, spin it. But bottom line, that's where the energy is at outside I of uh, um and I don't, I don't know if that's a fact. You're not the first person I've heard that from, Jen, that they reached out. How do they get involved volunteering or, um, you know, get involved, period, and they didn't yeah. hear back? I think for that's a while. Not a they're just, sign. That's no, not a right. good sign. When somebody reaches out and says, I have some really good ideas I'd like to share, I'd like to help, 
I would at least think it wor is worthy of a response. Yeah, and then, yeah. The worst, and then of course the worst part is, is that this decision could not have been made at a worse time because of the interview that just happened at the end of last week and this, all, you know, this whole big divisive crap that usually starts from one person and then it becomes this whole, see, I told you so, and I cannot this wait to help. hear. It's not going to help because you no. know he's going to put a video out there basically saying, you see, I was right about Dr. West. You should all listen to me because I know everything there is to know about politics. In fact, I should be the one running. I'm just too damn lazy to get off my ass. So I want everyone else to just follow me and do what I say. And so now. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you talking about a particular but the one thing is, statistically speaking, given the way that the WCCC works, he won't be there for very long. So they'll rotate him out and someone else will come in because that's what yeah. seems to keep happening. It's sort of like they because they, they just well, can't, they're not winning. <laughs> also, uh, again, I, I don't know Peter Dell, so I, I, I don't want to slam him. But something doesn't smell right to me when you say you left Marianne Williamson's campaign for family reasons. I, I don't remember what he said, but he said he left for personal reasons, uh, not because of her, but then you're Cornell West campaign manager. So, I mean, I, let, let's not, you know, obviously a lot of people have left Marianne Williamson's campaign. That's not a secret. And yet uh, I have a friend that just walked off Cornell's campaign because they brought on Peter Dow. Right. So, you know, just something, uh, I, I'm not saying he lied, but, there is something going on here where something doesn't smell right. It, it's uh, how is it? This is why people are always. This is why you get like. I mean, listen, we're friend, we are friendly with some of those libertarian fringe individuals who think that the FBI and CIA is literally at every corner. Like there's there's <laughs> infiltration that's going on everywhere. It's like every lizard people. It's like everyone thinks that there's something. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Something's wrong. And yet, when something like this happens. You really have to scratch your head and think of, of the millions of people in the country. And there's only a handful of presidential campaigns going on right now. Somehow, a person who walks off of one campaign is the same person that gets hired to walk on to this campaign? Right. I, mean, I, will say, I will say this in fairness, and I don't have any intel, but this is just my thought. In fairness, they might have been shopping for other people. And those other people knew if they would have run Cornell West campaign, that would be the end of their political career, you know, in the Democratic Party or at, in the two party duopoly that they'd never be hired again. Uh, so they could have been targeting other people who are skilled. There are people from Bernie's campaign who were good. A lot of a lot of people criticize Bernie's campaign and there are people to criticize but Bernie made the ultimate decisions. His He got good advice from his campaign that he just wouldn't take. So there are people like I would have recommended to West if he was asking, hey, reach out to this person who is a top Bernie's campaign. So that might have happened. And those people might have said no, just because they know career wise there, there would be no turning back and they'd be shunned from other jobs. Uh, but at the end of the day, listen, I just I'll repeat it. I don't know how somebody who's been a 20 year lifer or whatever it is in traditional politics, all the way from fucking Hillary and Bill and that club to, you know, down with the two party duopoly. I don't really know what creative outside the box thoughts. I will say from people that I did speak with on Marianne Williamson's campaign, they didn't have any negative things to say about him. They said he did a good job and it was more Marianne that's just a control freak and, you know, uh, that. So at least for her campaign, uh, there wasn't a lot. There wasn't much negative I heard about uh, Dow there. But again, I just think you need somebody who is an organizer, not a longtime consultant. I agree. I think that without question, if you're going to uh, do it, you got to do it differently. This cannot be done traditionally because, like you said, the consultant class, if you will, and look, don't hate the player, hate the, hate the game, as they say. You know, Dow was making his money one way, you know, six, seven years ago for a lengthy period of time. He clearly saw an opportunity that he thought was going to be more lucrative long term. And clearly it's been working for him because he's been hired by about a half a dozen people in the last few years. So whatever he is doing, it is working. And some people. Uh, that doesn't mean he's winning. That's true. But then again, the left generally doesn't win. Well, because cause you keep hiring people yeah, that don't win. The cohesiveness that needs to be had within this movement 
uh, it isn't making any sense. And that's the thing that I'm concerned about. That's the thing that was concerning about what happened last week with you know who and Dr. West. And so as a result, you realize that the division, there's such a lack of cohesion in the movement right now. And what you're doing, your work, which is so significant, because it isn't sexy. And I will remind people that even if you disagree with Crystal Ball and her position when it comes to Biden and Dr. West, be it as it may, Crystal always platforms Jordan and status quo and the work that they are doing and gets it out there to as many people as possible. Even if you don't agree with her position, agree with getting out the message about labor in this country. Because right now, that's one of the only bright, shining objects that we have. And if we are going to disagree on that front, fair enough. But throwing out the baby with the bathwater because you disagree on this particular... That's know, what it's maybe, become. It's, it's, that's what it's become. Uh, yeah. It's become you're canceled if, if you don't agree uh, or you take a position that I am viscerally against. I mean, I saw the debate, uh, Crystal and Kyle, how with Brianna. I, listen, I actually, uh, on the merits, if you care about policy, he wasn't wrong that there have been some policies that we would have not expected to be. For right. we, that, uh, I think where I differ from him, uh, Kyle, is that doesn't really exceed my bar by a lot. I, you know, I wanted more because the times call for more, particularly he ran on a $15 minimum wage and unilaterally surrendered. I mean, we could go down the list of things. So the, yeah. the idea of, well, I didn't expect anything. So getting ba 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 ba, you know, I don't think that really uh, makes the people, you know, um, rationing insulin or working three jobs. Right. But I think, I think where I part from a lot of the just chatter on Twitter and elsewhere is I don't ascribe like he's a bastard, you know, and like he's canceled and, or her, you know, uh, or they are who I told you they are, you know, I just, I don't agree, but right. I don't, I don't hate them. They're not like, let's throw them off progressive Island. I really think there's a lot, way too much of that. I didn't agree with Brianna on a lot of points she made. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't say cancel, cancel to her. So I just think like, you, I think uh, it's become, and I get it, people are hurting. And with, when you're hurting, you know, emotions get high. Uh, for, for, uh, for a lot of people watching that debate, the situation is urgent. And like, you know, Crystal's thing about like the National Labor Relations Board being stronger doesn't help them now. So I get why people are turned off by, that ar by their argument. What, what I think is we have to stop this ascribing bad motivations to people if we don't agree with them or – you know, they don't share our values or they don't get it. No, they just disagree. You know, it, 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 and I think if we're going to, if the standard is going to be, we on the left have to be in lockstep about all things, then we'll just perennially eat each, eat, eat each other alive and, and be a minority because the Republican Party is a well-oiled machine. doesn't really matter if they agree or not. They get in lockstep when it matters. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.